Hey guys, I just wanted to give an update video on this uh, juicy peach mango. It's a Zill variety. I got it from Seamus O'Leary's um, here in Phoenix, Arizona. This mango is in its fourth year uh, here planted in my yard. It is about six and a half to seven feet tall. It's put out these new, uh, this new growth this year. It's uh, kind of flushing out right after the monsoon. You can see kind of that new um, reddish yellow growth. That's new growth that it's, uh, that's flushed out here, kind of end of summer. We're now in September. I have two ficus trees on either side and I'm hoping, these ficus are tall enough that I'm hoping they'll be able to provide uh, a good frost protection from the mango this winter. This ficus tree was actually killed back to a, well, it, it, uh, it was frosted back to a stick and I was debating on cutting it out. I was so frustrated and thought I had lost it. And somebody said, hey, just give them time. You, you probably, you know, you're not familiar with ficus because you're not from, you're not from Phoenix. Uh, just give it time and it'll come back. And sure enough, it did. You can see the top of the original um, tree here where I, where I cut it. And then the cambium came back and we have branches and, and, uh, and it's big. It's kind of caught up to where some of the other trees were that were planted at the same time that, that didn't didn't have the same amount of dieback. Anyways, um, this mango, this juicy peach, it is, um, I believe it's a dwarf or semi dwarf variety. It doesn't it doesn't have the um, really strong upward growth that you see in some of the other mango varieties. It it maintains more of a a low bushy tree profile. It seems to want to keep growing from the terminal buds, which is something I don't like because the lower branches, um, I, I cut off about a third um, last fall because they got so big that they were kind of drooping to the ground. And I really wanted to um, promote uh, growth from the top of the tree and it seemed to have worked out. So um, the trunk, is about two and a half to three inches thick. I, it's this tree is too big for me to give it frost protection in the same way I gave it frost protection in years before. Where I completely tented it in. I mean that just doesn't seem practical this year. Uh, the last three years, we've had really, um, we, we've had warmer winters, so we haven't been sitting at 27 degrees for like 30 minutes in the morning. You know, so, sort of thing that 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 typically will um, threaten these trees what I've what I did last year is I, I didn't tent the tree I ended up just bringing out uh, four heat lamps that are 100 watts and they have the the, the um, ceramic reptile bulbs and I set those underneath the tree and I'll also wrap the trunk with a towel and I have velcro that I can velcro a towel around the trunk to protect that cambium from frost. Um, the heat lamps will be directed up into the canopy. Um, I'll, I've even brought out a sheet to cover it a few times, but that's sometimes kind of a, a hard thing to, um, uh, to do with wind. And also um, it could, you know, kind of weighs down and affects the shape of the tree. So um, I'm hoping that the winters will continue to be favorable to, to these tropical plants. A um, little bit of a little bit of a sad story for this spring. I had good fruit set. It had um, mangoes that were kind of getting past the pea size that I normally would see, and then it would abort. But um, they seem to pass that stage and I had the good idea in my head after reading some extension papers that I was going to use gibberellic acid and there's another um, really common hormone that's used for fruit set. Well, I didn't get the measurements right. I mean, we're talking like one part per million or five parts per million or something and I put in like, a, I put in a lot more than that, you know, just using my eyes and not my brain. So um, what ended up happening is uh, the hormones actually caused the tree to uh, abort its fruit, caused the leaves to go really narrow and lengthen out. 
and also the grass under it, it just grew like really tall and thin and everything else around it was really bushy and healthy looking. And, and um, after seeing that, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna let this thing, you know, produce naturally. I'm gonna try to encourage it with the standard uh, fertilizer regimen. Um, and I'm gonna stay away from hormones because clearly I don't know what I'm doing. So, um, typically these trees will, I mean, fruit trees in general, I'm thinking apples and, and things of that nature, they, uh, they start to fruit in year four. I know some of the orchards can get them to fruit as early as year three. Um, but this mango, it should, I mean, it's to the point where it should start retaining its mangoes. I know some varieties do really well, like you'll go to the nursery and you'll see a mango that's a stick and it's got one giant mango hanging from that stick. <laughs> so uh, this isn't that type of tree. I think it's just gotta be a little bit older before it holds its fruit. Um, and I think next year is gonna be the year. So pretty excited about that. Um, I hope to give an update. Um, my wife is talking about moving across town to another home and, and uh, it's been a little bit of a, uh, I don't wanna say a point of contention, but uh, you know, after you put in a lot of time in your yard and, and uh, growing these trees up, it's hard just to, to let that go and move into some, you know, boring landscape with the typical, you know, with the typical stuff you see around here and have to start all over again. So um, I hope to continue to live here so I can continue to provide updates on these trees. Thanks for watching.